What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and I'm talking to the new guy, the guy who just built his first tower and he doesn't know what to do next. So we're gonna take the assumption that you guys have built your tower, it turns on and everything and now you're like, now what do I do? I've got no DVD drive, how the heck do I install windows? I mean, drivers, I, I don't know what to do next. Everyone talks about building the tower, very few people ever talk about the, the hardest part for some people which is just figuring out how to get everything up and running. So today we're gonna try and cover that topic and if you are a veteran, maybe you have some useful ways of making what I'm about to show you even more efficient. So watch this video, comment down below with your best tips and tricks, and let's get started. Drop your temperatures and get maximum performance from your processor with Corsair's new A500 air cooler. Intuitive slide and lock fan mount system allows for variable mounting height, providing the largest range of RAM compatibility and ease of installation, while the ML120 fans provide high static pressure at low volume levels. To learn more about the all new A500 from Corsair, click the link in the description below. So there's a couple things you're gonna need for this. We're gonna need our Windows install media. Now I'm not gonna to talk to you about how to make that today because it, believe it or not, it's not enough content to make its own video. Um, and it's really, really simple. So if you just go to Google on another machine, you'll need a laptop or something if you don't have the actual Windows install media. This is so out of date. This would need several hours worth of updates depending on your internet speed. So um, what we do is we actually install or create new install medias based on the latest versions of Windows. Now it's really simple. If you go to Google and just look up Windows install media, you'll find the tool that you can download. It's only a couple of clicks and then it will be a much more recent version of Windows than if you buy one off of a shelf. So get yourself a USB stick that's got at least eight gigabytes and then go through the tutorial process. So now that you have your install media, we're gonna go ahead and stick it into our system. And we are assuming now that this is a completely fresh install. You're not taking any hard drives from another system that have a Windows install on them. Um, if you are, then you're gonna to want to unplug it from your drive before we move forward. We'll talk about that in a sec. We're gonna boot up our system, we're gonna get into our BIOS. So to get into BIOS, you're just gonna mash the delete key. On this particular BIOS, if we scroll down to the bottom right here, we get easy mode. If we click on that, this is kind of a dashboard, a snapshot of everything happening inside of our system right here. So if we look, there's our 3800X, eight core. Here are both of our memory sticks. We wanna make sure they're all showing up. They are, and they are running at their base clock. We're not gonna overclock that yet. We're not gonna enable DOCP or any of the XMP profiles or any of that sort of stuff because we want our system to be as stable as possible during the install. We can go and play around with all that stuff later to get our maximum advertised speeds. So just leave everything out of the box. Don't play with the overclock buttons, don't play with the fan curves, nothing. Just let it go. Be Elsa. The other thing we're gonna look for here is to make sure that all of our drives are showing up. So you can see we have one drive showing up under SATA. This particular system has one SATA drive and one NVMe drive. So if you don't see both your drives there because you're using an NVMe, don't freak out. That usually shows up in a different place. Um, we can also see that we've got our Corsair Voyager Mini 3.0000A partition one, that is this guy right here that's got our Windows install media on it. That is what we are gonna be actually installing to. From. Or from, <laughs> well, correct. We're installing to this system from this. The other thing we wanna make sure though is that our actual um, NVMe drive is showing up. And then to do that in this particular BIOS, it's kind of weird. We gotta go back to standard mode, go over to peripherals, go down to NVMe, and there it is right there, Samsung 970 Evo plus one terabyte. So what we're gonna do now, just because we know that they are all showing up, is we are going to unplug the power going to our SATA drive. And this is okay to do while the, the drive is active in BIOS. Probably freaked a lot of people out right there, but that's okay. It still shows because it saw it when it initialized, but we don't want that. We want to go into a boot override and this again is gonna be dependent completely on your particular motherboard. We're telling our BIOS, boot to this. If this isn't a bootable, then go to this. And that's the drive we just unplugged. We don't want it to go to that one. And the reason why we're doing that is this just gives us the best opportunity to have a nice, clean, fresh install on the drive we want to be installed on. Sometimes the drives are kind of difficult to distinguish in the actual Windows install tool, and we'll show you that, where if the only drive we have connected at that point is the one we want to install to, then we know we're not gonna accidentally format and override on a backup uh, hard drive. Maybe you took a hard drive out of another system that has all your game files and stuff on it, pictures. If that's plugged in and you accidentally install to it, guess what? It wipes it and then you lose all that data. Technically, you lose all that data. It's easier to get back if you're a more advanced user, but that's obviously not the point of today's video. 
So with that, we're going to go ahead and just F10, save configuration and exit. It's going to restart to our Windows Media. I know a lot of people are like, but where's the DVD drive? I like DVDs. I'm more comfortable with DVD. Trust me, this is much, much faster than a spinning drive or a spinning optical ever was in terms of install speeds. This, the days of waiting an hour for all your files to copy are long gone. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to click next, install now. This is where you put in your key. I'm not going to show you guys my key. You need to use your own key. However you got that key is up to you. I don't particularly care. So once you put in your install key, this is the next screen you get. You've got to accept the terms and license, blah, blah, blah. So we're not upgrading. We are doing a custom install, which is funny. That's, that should say clean install. It says custom install windows only advanced. So now you can see only the drive we want is showing. If you had three or four drives and you didn't unplug all of them, you would have more than one showing right there. So because this is the drive I want to install too, this is the NVMe. And you can see now why we unplug our drive because it's not labeled, it doesn't show a name. It just says drive zero, unallocated space. And it would be drive one, drive two, drive three. And if there were any partitions, you would see drive zero, partition one, drive zero, partition two, drive zero. So it can get confusing to someone that's not used to dealing with partitions and multiple drives. So since that's the only drive showing up, we can click next. If this was existing, it had existing data that you just want wiped because it's coming from another drive, then what you could do if it had multiple partitions is you would click each partition and hit delete. And then you can hit format if you needed to, if it had data on there. Otherwise, since this is a clean drive, we're just gonna go ahead and hit next. Now that it's getting files ready for installation, this is the part that is super fast now versus what it used to be. Now here's the other thing too. There's a neat little trick. People will tell you, you can't install Windows anymore in an offline account. That's stupid. You need a Windows account. The way you do it is you don't have the internet connected at the time of install. So if you were to plug in right now, your ethernet cable, um, it would automatically go online and say, hey, we're connected. You need a Windows account to move forward, which is something that we hate around here. We do not want to force ourselves into needing online Windows accounts. So by having no internet connected, then uh, it makes it where we can actually create just a standard Windows user account that's not connected to Microsoft.com. So it just restarted on its own. One of two things are gonna happen. It's either gonna restart the Windows installation, depending on whether or not the BIOS is smart enough to recognize, hey, there's an OS on this hard drive now, let's move forward on that. If it brings up the screen again, where it's like, accept the EULA to move forward, blah, 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 then what you would do is you would unplug the drive and restart the system. All right, so now that I see that we're at this screen, we are booted off of the hard drive or the SSD that we've installed, and we can take the install media and throw that aside. Now we're in the UK, so we're gonna go ahead and do the United Kingdom. United Kingdom <laughs> of America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously choose your region here. We are not connected to the internet, so we're gonna say, I don't have the internet, at which point Microsoft's probably going, that's kind of weird. So what we're gonna not do is connect now, because now it's gonna do everything it can to say, hey, plug in your cable, please. We won't spy on you, I swear. We won't force you to go online to use Windows. We promise. Liars. So we're going to continue with limited setup. Don't let that fool you. What that means is it's not going to automatically install the garbage you don't want anyway. Okay, who's going to use this PC? The internet is going to use this PC. You guys. <laughs> Password. One. <laughs> One. Boop. Create security questions. What was your first pet's name? One. Fail. What's the name of the city where you were born? Mars. <laughs> What's your childhood nickname? Fatty. <laughs> All right, do more across devices. No, I do not want it to automatically sync my devices because last time I did that, it wiped one of my other devices because oh, Windows yeah. is so freaking smart. Oh. Phil remembers that. Jay was not a happy Jay that day. So no, we are not gonna sync. Get help from your digital assistant. We're gonna give that a big Eh. Now this is all the spyware that Windows wants to automatically install and they want your permission to do it. So we're gonna give them the big uh, 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 uh. <laughs> It's kind of f finishing its install in the background. It's getting a bunch of things ready for you, whatever that means. We're not connected to the internet. Now here's the thing. Most of the drivers and stuff you need for your system to operate properly will work with just the basic drivers that Windows has pre-configured inside of it. It knows this is an AMD system. It's gonna automatically install just the basic AMD chipset drivers. Um, the ethernets in most of these now are usually one of three different types, Intel, Realtek, um, I don't know what the third one is, but there's basic drivers to make all this stuff work out of the box. 
Um, same thing with your video drivers. It's gonna install a basic VGA driver. It might install an old out of date NVIDIA driver if you connect it to the internet. And then it will install the DCH driver, which we don't particularly like around here. So we're gonna just let it do its thing, get us to the desktop and we'll show you what to do next. So now we're at the Windows desktop. For the very first time, you can see our audio driver. It's like, hey, you don't have an audio driver. What the heck? And it's funny, if you click on that, it's trying to detect problems, but Windows is actually stupid enough to where it's like, oh look, which of these drivers do you want to troubleshoot? None of them, because we will handle all of that in a moment. Now, obviously we have that drive that we disconnected. So what we're gonna do right now is because, believe it or not, SATA is hot swappable, I'm gonna just plug that SATA back in with Windows running, and it may or may not automatically detect the drive. Our drive is not even is not showing up. And this is the part that freaks a lot of people out. And because it's a brand new drive with no partition or no format type on there, what we're going to do right here is we are going to click the little Windows start button on the very bottom left. And we are not connected to the internet yet. And that's perfectly fine. We're going to type in disk management and it will start to show up. Create and format hard disk partition. Click on this guy. And it detected our drive now. See, this is the part that makes me just so upset with Microsoft is that it knows this. Why couldn't it just suddenly do this on its own? Why couldn't it automatically be like, new drive detected, let's set it up. No, you've got to go looking for disk management. So GPT should already be selected. If, that's, if it's not, select it. Disk zero, that's fine. So you see that this is black. That means right now it is a non-usable drive. So here are the partitions it set up when we installed Windows. It's got the EFI system on its own 100 megabyte partition. We've got the rest of the boot drive right here. And here's our recovery drive. That's all normal. So what you're gonna do right here is you're gonna right click, new simple volume. Click next. This is where you can actually set the volume size. We're not gonna worry about splitting it into multiple drives. Click next. Make sure it has a drive letter because this is the part where sometimes it won't do a drive letter but just make sure it has a drive letter, hit next. You can name the drive here if you want. So we'll call it GAMS X. Oh, File yeah. system, leave it as NTFS, that's fine. And then allocation unit size, default, all that's fine. And it will automatically perform a quick format. So if we hit next and finish, now our drive will show up and there it is, right there. So that's a really common problem people have, like, where are my drives showing up? There they are. And we even has the name that, if you don't like the name, you can always go in here and just rename it and be like, <laughs> right? Now what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and connect this guy to the internet. And this is the part where the gauntlet starts. And what I mean by that is as soon as I plug this in, a couple things are gonna happen. One, it's gonna go, oh my God, you're not activated. It's also gonna then start trying to install the drivers that are missing, like the audio driver that you saw. It's gonna automatically install a video driver. The video driver that it's gonna install is gonna more than likely be out of date. Another way that you can also sort of expedite this is click the little window start key, the search again, look up update. So as you can see, we had a lot of updates that this was missing here. Some security driver stuff. It's seeing that we need to install chipset drivers for AMD. There's a 1903 update. Uh, malicious software removal tool, framework driver. So just let all of this go. It's like I said, it's gonna probably download some out of date stuff, specifically the video card driver. But once this is all done and it goes through its restarts, then we'll talk about what to do next. Now it's important in my opinion to install these updates before drivers. Reason for that is depending on the version of Windows that you're on, some drivers require certain versions of Windows to unlock all of its features. AMD Ryzen, for instance, requires a certain version of Windows and newer to get a lot of the Ryzen CPU um, C state and you know, performance activity and the performance settings and all of that to be active in the, in the driver or in the operating system. Same thing with the uh, NVIDIA uh, graphics card. If you're running an RTX graphics card, in this case, it's a 2080 Super, if you need a certain version of Windows and a certain driver version that you can't get unless you're on the right version of Windows to enable RTX features. We dealt with that with Battlefield 5. We're like, why are we not getting DXR option to show up? Well, it's because we were on too old of a version of Windows that was required to get the latest driver that had it all enabled. Now you're gonna notice there's gonna be several restarts during this process. Some of these need to happen in certain orders for them to finish the install. So what'll happen is it'll restart and then it will go back to the next portion of the install. And a lot of this will happen in the background without you even knowing it. So that's why I like to tell people to go here automatically and visually look at it to see what's happening. Cause you might be doing things in the background. And you're like, what is happening? My system wants to restart or this isn't working. And well, it's cause this is all happening in the background. So the very first thing you should do quite honestly is your updates. 
Oh, see the driver, the Windows uh, video driver. Eh, went to four, or 1440, right? <laughs> so if we look here, we are on version 432.00. But if we go to, the, to NVIDIA's website, you'll see the latest driver is actually 442.19. Yeah, 432.00 isn't even on the most recent driver, like as far back as November of 2019. So we'll go ahead and download the latest driver as well. We'll download this save it and we'll install that ourselves after everything else is done. So now that it's kind of finished installing the framework for the 1903 uh, update, it wants a restart now. Now you can schedule a restart for later if you're still installing like a game or something you're trying to multitask, um, but it gives us the option to manually restart it, which we're gonna have it do now. And then those other ones that said pending install or, or restart, they should all automatically install and then the list will update with whatever updates are left. So you wanna work your way through the list until at the end it says, you are up to date. Once it says that, then we can move on to some of the fun stuff, which is getting a little bit more speed um, and just some general tips and tricks to make your system run better. So we went ahead and did the optional update um, for the main 1903. So the main updates are optional because of their size, but we decided we wanna go ahead and get this system completely up to date. So with that came other smaller updates that went along with that big one. So once they're all done, then it will say, you're up to date. All right, so it only took about 20 minutes or so. We are fully up to date now. We're lucky because we have fast gigabit ethernet here. This obviously will depend on your internet speed. So we're fully up to date. So remember that driver that we downloaded from NVIDIA? We're gonna go ahead and double click that and we are gonna run the installer for 442.19. Now, one of the things we're gonna do when we install this is we're gonna do a clean install. We want it to, instead of installing the differences over top of the old driver, we just want it to completely remove the old driver and install a new one from scratch. A lot of weird computer issues can happen from installers installing on top of old versions over and over and over again as time goes on. So one of the best practices that I always do to keep things as fresh as possible. Yeah, fresh, it's so fresh, bro. It's so fresh, bro. It also will default to wanting to install the driver and GeForce Experience. I don't personally use GeForce Experience, so I install just the driver. Agree and continue. Custom, next. This is where you can then click perform clean install and then you can just leave all the defaults selected. It unselects GeForce Experience. That's the only difference between the old, the other click and or the other radio button and that and the one we chose. Perform clean installation, hit next. Now it might do a restart during this. Sometimes with a clean install, it'll restart the system. Sometimes it won't. All right, now you wanna get the most speed out of your NVIDIA graphics card. Here's what we're gonna do. Click on manage 3D settings. On the right, you're gonna come down here to where it says um, we have a G-Sync panel, so that's automatic. Power management mode, optimal power. We're gonna set that to prefer maximum performance. Now I do this, which is what it's gonna make this, the GPU not idle down all the way. It will introduce a little bit more heat to your GPU, but this is what gives us better scores in our benchmarks and stuff. Most people won't notice this, but this is what I do. And then the other thing we do is we come down here to texture filtering quality, and I set that to high performance. I've never noticed a difference between the texture quality between the two, but I have noticed a performance difference in terms of how much faster the graphics card is. So since everyone's not using an NVIDIA graphics card, and some people are using AMD and the control panels are different, I'll show you how to set your maximum refresh rate. If you're using a panel that's higher than 60 FPS, or even if you are using 60 FPS panel, it might say 59. Um, I'll show you how to set your max refresh rate. So on the desktop, anywhere, just right click, go to display settings, go right down here to advanced display settings. And you can see here your resolution and your scaling and all that. So make sure this is set to your max resolution of your panel. Go to advanced display settings, display adapter properties for display one, it's at the bottom. Then click monitor. Now you can see we're set to 59 Hertz, like I just said, but this panel is capable of 144. So we're gonna go ahead and click that, hit apply. It's gonna restart the panel keep changes and now everything, you, you can't see on this video because you're only seeing it in 30 FPS, but we now have 144 Hertz. And we are gonna do shift restart. This is gonna bring us up to our restart menu, which will allow us to tell the system to reboot right into the UEFI BIOS. So instead of having to sit there and mash delete, you can just say troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI firmware settings and then restart. So what that says is just go to the BIOS of your motherboard. Without having to push anything, it'll take us there. All right, so we're not gonna talk about overclocking because that's very CPU dependent, motherboard dependent, too many factors. But what I am gonna show you is how to get the maximum speed of the memory that you paid for. 
So if we look over here in the BIOS, you can see our memory is running at 2139.47. That's technically 2133. But we want to get the speed that we paid for. Now that's the base rate of the memory at which it's running, the base clock. So if we come over here to, where is it, system? Is it system? MIT, advanced memory settings. This is where we can actually come in here and change the profile. Now you see extreme memory profile, XMP is disabled. That's gonna be called two different things. XMP, it refers to extreme um, memory performance. That is specific to Intel, but it just basically says that the advertised speeds of the DIMMs are what that setting is gonna set them to. You might also see DOCP, which is memory that's specific to AMD. What I've found though, is that XMP still works on AMD without any sort of problem. So if you go into your BIOS, you just enable, you can see now it sets it to 3200 megahertz. That's what it was at. Well, that's what this was and not 34 or 36. So we were at 2133, it's now gonna go to 3200. So just F10, save and exit, or whatever your particular BIOS is set to. Now our memory is gonna run quite a bit faster. And with Ryzen, it definitely makes a difference on compute tasks and you know when you're doing general computing and even gaming. So that now gets us our memory speed back up to what we paid for. That's a step a lot of people forget to do or don't even know about. They just think, oh, I bought this 3400 stick of RAM and I stuck it in and that's what it's running at. But it's not, unless you go in and actually set it to that. But we don't do any of that because in rare instances, sometimes the memory at that speed with a particular CPU setup will start to give you weird blue screen crashes and stuff. And that's the last thing we wanna deal with when we're doing Windows updates and driver installs is a random blue screen crash in the middle of it that opens up a whole new can of worms we don't wanna deal with. So we don't do any overclocking, and that is technically a memory overclock. We don't do any of that until we are satisfied that our system is installed and up and running. Now the last thing I would do at this point, I'm not even gonna show you because it's very specific to your particular motherboard, is go to the manufacturer website for your motherboard and download the latest drivers for all of the feature sets. So the chipset drivers, the ethernet driver, if there's a sound card, the sound card driver, and if you've got RGB, like an ASUS motherboard, MSI, or whatever, and you wanna control that RGB or that lighting, then you would download whatever the respective software is for that. Aura, Mystic Light, um, if you're using NZXT, you know, Cam, and all that sort of stuff. So there you have it, kind of a longer video, but sort of a little bit of a hand-holding showing you how to go from a completely built tower with no operating system to getting the OS installed on the correct drive, how to get drives to show up that aren't showing up, how to get them formatted, uh, how to get your Windows install update or updates installed, how to get your drivers updated, um, and then how to get your memory speed up to the speeds that you actually paid for. And there's a couple other utilities that you could download if you guys wanna have some fun. That's things like MSI Afterburner, which works with both AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards, where you can play with fan profiles and a little bit of overclocking safely. You're not gonna brick your system or brick your graphics card through overclocking through MSI. They all have safeguards, which won't let them go too far. Um, but other than that, that is pretty much all there is to it. So tell me what you guys think about this particular video. If you have any tips and tricks that maybe we didn't cover or touch upon that you think would make it easier for new uh, installers or new builders to get their systems up and running, then comment down below your best tips and tricks for getting your brand new system up and running. Thanks for watching guys. And if you have any other suggestions for tutorials like this that you'd like to see, make sure you comment down in the comments below and we'll do what we can to try and accommodate. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.